Hello and welcome back to Galgorm Hall. This is a short video to show you how I go about painting the brickwork on all the buildings and you know any other aspect that I'm putting brickwork into on the um, on the layout. I've done one of these videos. I've actually I've done two of these videos before. One was a long time ago, whenever I was just painting strips of plastic card to show you the 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 technique, and the last time was whenever I was making the the tunnel entrance down at the end of the branch line. Now that tunnel entrance used a different color um, color tones than what we're going to be using in this one here, but it was still the same method. So if you have seen it before, maybe this isn't for you. But if you haven't seen it, um, maybe you'll learn something, uh, you know, or you know, find this useful. But anyway, in front of you we have the uh, Victorian houses kit from Wild, and I'm now at the stage where I need to get the brickwork painted before I can carry on with the rest of the construction. So the whole thing has to be painted um, in the, for the brickwork except for this wee section down here and the same on the other side where um, it's actually a plaster wall. So I've masked that off so that we don't get any paint onto that. And what we're going to do is we want to try and get three layers of colour coming through whenever we get the final um, finish at least three strong colours. You'll get sort of various textures because of the wash that'll go over the top of it at the end. But one of those colours is the actual colour of the plastic card itself and then we'll use two tins of paint. Now, I've already started on this side here with what is Revels Matte 83 and it is um, I think it's well, actually I'll tell you what, I'll put the, the the name or the colours of the paint into the script description beneath because I can't actually remember the actual colour tone that it is. But all I'm doing is this is getting a full coat of that um, matte 83 all the way around the building. And once that's done, I will come back to you and we'll do the next stage. You don't need to watch me painting an entire house, do you? Okay, back in a minute. Right, we're back at this um, second stage of the painting process. As you can see, I've actually made a start on it. Now, what you can see is this is the original colour that we started with here, um, the Matte 85 from Revel. And what I am doing now is applying a coat of Matte 83. But while I'm doing that, I am putting it on in small sections and then taking a bit of kitchen roll and dabbing it off so that we see some of that 83 coming in beneath and hopefully you can pick that up in the uh, the picture right now. Now let me just show you the process for that. It is an extremely simple um, thing to do. The key is whenever you're at this stage of the painting process is just to work in small sections at a time. Um, go too far and the, the paint begins to sort of dry off a little bit and becomes a little bit more stubborn to remove. So by taking just small sections, sort of an inch, an inch and a half square and then treating them, then you can move on to the next stage. Now one thing you should probably be careful of is because you're working in these small sections you will have that overlap of paint so just be sure whenever you do the actual dabbing process that you sort of dab over um, the lines that uh, you don't sort of see distinctive um, areas you know where you have squared it off so that wee bit of paint has been put on there and we're going to just take a bit of old kitchen tile and we're going to dab at it. Let's see if I can get this in as close as possible to you. So there's one dab just in itself. And you see the brickwork, the orange brickwork's coming through. But we still have elements of the, the, the darker uh, sort of burgundy kind of colour as well along with it. And you just keep doing that over it. Now you can dab it lightly. You can take you know a good sort of press off it and depending on the force on which you press onto the brickwork will depend as to how much uh, paint will come off and if you're not happy with it just put another layer of paint onto it and have another go at it and that's basically it now once that stage is complete 
um, we'll let it dry again ready for the next um, layering of paint after that let me just do one more little section for you here and then I go on and uh, finish the whole building so again if I can catch it in the light you can see the difference between what I've done down here and the, the, the new layer of paint going above take a kitchen tile and just press onto it and again remembering to pay particular attention at those join lines where you've already been working on the section that you're working on now right, can you see that there it's hard to catch in this light now, at this stage I've done the, the front here, let's see if we can see that. The front's beginning to dry off now actually. And you can see the variations in the brick. And it still looks quite blotchy at the minute. And doesn't just look quite right. But once we apply the wash over the top of this, which gets in, it's into the grout of the, the mortar of the brick, that'll really sort of bring this to life. So let me go and finish this bit, little, um, the rest of the building all the way around. And we'll come back and we'll do that. So now we're left with a rather blotchy looking brickwork once all that those two um, layers of paint have been put on with the second one uh, removed. What we're going to do now is apply the, the mortar to the brick. Now at this stage you need to decide what sort of tone of mortar you want in there. You could have it light as if it's been just freshly um, applied or sort of right down to a very dark grey, almost black, if it's something that's you know it sort of has been sitting uh, in the elements for, for many years. Um, I would be inclined to go for sort of a mid-range grey. Uh, whatever colour you do put on is going to change the uh, the the, the colour of the, the outer surface of this brickwork um, because no matter how much you clean there's going to be a, a little bit of residue of that um, that grey wash that will be left within on the surface of the brickwork so just bear that in mind now for mine here I've actually gone for a slightly pale grey I'm not sure if it's the right choice um, I haven't I've done the back of it here and I'll show you that after I've um, uh, put a little bit of uh, the, the process on the front just to show you what's going on but all you're doing is applying it on just as you had before with the other paint now, the difference being this time is this is an acrylic paint rather than the enamel Incidentally, this is l probably only about 20 minutes or half an hour after I finished the, f the last painting process. Um, so the paint underneath is still tacky. Not even tacky, it's actually dried off quite well, you know, but it's certainly not cured right the way through. But that has the added benefit of, you know, you sort of, uh, whenever you're working with the, uh, the tissue paper to... Um, to remove this it can just sort of make some subtle changes to the paint beneath as well now with this here you need a good vigorous rub with a clean piece of kitchen roll and you're wanting to take everything off that top layer absolutely everything we don't want to leave any of it at all but okay and you're left with it like that now it will um, it won't dry out just as bright as that particularly in this sort of brighter colour it will tone down a wee bit but you can already see just in this little bottom area here we're getting residue of the grey being left now I would normally as well just give a wee gentle lick of the finger with the tongue and just rub over the top it's almost if you're trying to wash the brickwork and it just helps lift some of that off too and then do another rub with the kitchen roll but that's the process now, it's 
probably going to be hard to pick up in this light and certainly with it still all being quite wet let's have a look at the one at the back that's the one at the back can we catch that at the bottom so yes here are dark patches of the darker second layer of paint slightly oranger ones in around here but you certainly can see the tonal differences in the brickwork now what you could do i mean i have gone for two fairly contrasting colors but you could go darker again on that second run of brick maybe sort of more into the the deep browns which i have done on the uh the signal box i used that um a, a, a deep sort of leather brown for it um and it does bring up much more sort of wear and tear but for this one here i thought i'd give it a go with the um uh, these two colours, I mean th there's no right or wrong answer in terms of what colour of brickwork that you're going to actually apply just have a look at what's in around you all houses, new and old, have all got different tones of brickwork in them and it's just deciding on what will suit your era best but I'll go on ahead and I'll finish this and what we'll do is after it's done I'm going to let it dry thoroughly and we'll come back for one last little review of it before we um, wrap this little video up. There is more work that you could do after this um, but I want to get the rest of the structure built and then we'll start adding some weathering powders and detailing work at a later date. This is as far as I want to take this for now. So anyway. I'll go and finish off in this here before it dries out completely and I'll be back for a very brief last look at the, the, the paint process after that, okay? Okay, let's take a last little look at this uh, painting technique before we finish. The, the mortar wash has now been um, left overnight and it's now completely dry. Now I've actually, if we turn it around to the back here, hopefully you can see there in this picture that this gable wall is slightly greyer than this wall here. Now that's not a trick of the light in the room. It's actually because I've been going right round the build um, to sort of clean off the sort of dusty residue that you get left with the acrylic afterwards. And then basically what I'm using is an old sponge scar and I'm just giving it a very light rub over the top to agitate that um, uh, acrylic paint again and then with the wet finger it's hard to do in this one here because it's quite high up to get it into shot I'm just giving it a bit of a, a rub over to clear off and then to dry off with a bit of kitchen tile again and then once that dries you see it's already beginning to blend in a lot more with this wall on the side here so still this one to do here but let's just take one final look at the brickwork the side here shows it particularly well if we bring it in as close as we can you can really see the different uh, tonal colours of the brickwork there's some just sort of are that orange, there's a deeper red, there's a mix of them, you know. So this effect can really be quite useful and it's quite a, quite a quick and easy um, process to go through to produce the brickwork for your buildings. Just before I go, this is the signal box that I had done. And again, it's using the exact same effect, but with a couple of different colors. Um, we still have that orangey colour, but I think with in the, in the case of this one, it was more of a leathery brown that was used on it. And again, you can see the way it has picked out those textures and tones of the actual brickwork. And this one's had a little bit of um, a whitewash added to it, sort of to give the impression of a line scale leach from the, 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 uh, the brickwork. And it is something that I will do on this build in due course, but I'd rather get everything else put into place first so I can work out where uh, you know you're going to maybe have run lines of um, sort of staining on the wall uh, and the likes before I actually get into doing that but anyway hopefully this has been of some use to you um, if so please feel free to comment below if you're not already a subscriber of the channel please click that subscribe button 
and the notifications so that you can get future videos from the channel. Um, but for the time being, thanks for watching and chat again soon.